Good morning and welcome to St. Michael's. Please join us in singing our opening hymn, number 305, Our God is Here, number 305. Please rise. Everybody had a good and safe 4th of July. I know I enjoyed my time away with family this week. And now we gather today and in our gospel we hear Jesus talk about a mysterious 72 disciples sent forth to proclaim the coming of the kingdom and the good news. And we are reminded today that we are called to be one of those 72 disciples. As we now prepare ourselves for this liturgy this morning, we take a moment to pause and call to mind our city. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contract. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Join now in the singing of our glory.
O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated to hear God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her. All you who love her, exalt, exalt with her. All you who were mourning over her. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breasts. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread pros prosperity over Jerusalem like a river and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent. As nurslings you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the, Lord, the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be to all who follow this rule. 
and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make troubles for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Lord appointed 72 others, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs, to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter first say, peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return back to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is near at hand for you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Recently, a news journalist decided to spend a year doing jobs that most Americans will not do. One of those jobs was to harvest lettuce. For two months, he was the only white person working among Mexican immigrant workers. He described the back-breaking labor vividly and how he had to become numb to all the pains of his back, arms, and hands to make it through each day. He had to ignore his first fierce thirst for water in the unrelating hot sun. To take a break to get water would put him hopelessly behind schedule in picking lettuce. What was most impressive in the story was the way in which others we're helping one another. When one person became sick, the others would automatically take a bit more responsibility upon themselves so that the workload could be handled by all and be accomplished on time. This work was so physically strenuous and the pay so meager that few would ever think to work full time picking lettuce. But migrants, desperate for income, gladly accept this work. In today's gospel, Jesus invites his disciples to take up the very strenuous task of evangelization. As in the lettuce fields of America, the harvest is abundant, 
But those who are willing to do this demanding work are very few in number. Those who are willing to be evangelists are indeed like lambs among wolves. They are gentle. They are loving. And they will face from time to time fierce opposition. Like migrant workers in America, whose presence is often unwanted, and yet the work they do is indispensable, the evangelists in God's vineyard also can face frequent opposition. Furthermore, the evangelists of today bring with them no provisions and very few defenses. For their food, they are dependent upon whatever is offered to them. They deserve payment, but there is no guarantee that they will receive any payment. Like migrants who cannot raise their voice in protest against the injustices towards them for fear of deportation, so too do today's evangelists may need to move from another town if the one they first enter to does not warmly receive them. Their vulnerability proclaims an alternative kind of power to that of the reigning systems of today, the power of the saving love of God through the crucified Christ. Throughout all of their hardship, evangelists are to be bearers of peace, proclaiming the reign of God's love. Now, who would be enticed to do this kind of work? The last part of the gospel points to the rewarding aspects of doing evangelization. When proclaimers of the gospel can see that the power they use for good is able to transform evil situations, the ensuing joy can be indescribable. It is essential for the evangelist, however, not to focus on the visible results of their work, nor to take false pride in what they may think has been accomplished through their own labors. The true joy of the evangelist comes from acknowledging the divine source of their power that they are able to wield as they entrust themselves completely to doing God's will. Like the returning exiles addressed in our first reading today, who are filled with rejoicing over the rebuilding of Jerusalem, they know that they rest under God's protective mantle. It is God, the loving Father, who will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, carrying Jerusalem's inhabitants in his arms and folding them in his lap. So today, those who respond to Jesus' invitation to go out into the fields never go alone. Like those migrant workers cutting lettuce, they have partners who rally support for them. Anyone who is struggling is never left behind. And all who do the work of God and proclaim his gospel together share in the joy of a successful harvest. Our growing in faith question then on this 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time is simply this. Am I willing to do the work of God? Am I willing to be counted as one of those 72 sent forth to proclaim the coming of God's kingdom? As we reflect upon the challenges of proclaiming the good news, of living the faith in our own lives, we now stand and offer our prayers and needs. Our God has called us to work in his harvest. Trusting in that God knows what is best for us, we offer to God our prayers this day. Lord, you sent the 72 out into the world with the message of your Son. Help us to continue to spread this message of good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for Pope Francis and for all bishops who lead the church as we continue the work of Jesus in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that those called to leadership in government may find renewed help in the works of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that vocations to the priesthood and religious life increase in response to the call to serve in the abundant harvest of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that God may grant those affected by abuse in any way the courage to tell their story and seek healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, especially Bernice Strachey and Francis and Patricia Murtaugh, the special intentions of this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the petitions in our prayer basket, for the sick list in our bulletin, for our family members serving in the military, and for our own personal petitions that we now express in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Together we pray the rebuilding prayer in front of our missalettes. Almighty God, we thank you for the countless blessings you have bestowed upon St. Michael's Parish. Your grace has filled this church with people of faith who are dedicated to spreading the good news. Open our hearts and guide us. Renew our faith and embolden us so that together we can rebuild St. Michael's. You sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to search out and bring back the lost sheep of the fold of your church. Help us to do the same. May your Holy Spirit give us the wisdom, strength, and perseverance to engage in the task of renewing and rebuilding St. Michael's. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us be seated now for preparation of gifts. Please join us in our offertory hymn, number 378, Here I Am, Lord, number 378.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, and your goodness we have this wine to offer. Through the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion, for the waywardness that is ours. He humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, he, we sing the hymn of your glory. As without end, we acclaim. yourself, so that from the rise and ascent of setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts which we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
the mystery of faith. His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body. One spirit in Christ. May he make of us, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, the clergy, and all the people you gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom will be stolen the world, all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. But not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to another a sign of that peace.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Please join us in our communion hymn, number 351, The Supper of the Lord, number 351. Just body, precious blood, sinners' breath. 
Announcements. If you uh, missed the bulletin last week, have no fear because we had to do a two-week uh, bulletin because of the holidays, so we have the same bulletin this week as last week. So you don't need to pick one up if you got it last week, but if you didn't, you get a second chance this weekend. I'm pleased to announce that after our mailing campaign and the response we had the last several weeks, that uh, this past week we went over the top of our goal for this year's annual diocesan appeal. Our goal was 53048 and as of now we have $147 above that goal. So thank you to everybody who generously contributed to the appeal. And it's a great relief to be done with it and not have to say another word about it. And once again, St. Michael's is helping out with the Shelby County uh, Community Outreach Program with their backs, uh, backpack program. As we said last weekend, uh, each summer uh, we are asked to donate funds to help purchase school supplies, which are then placed in a backpack for a needy student. Last year, St. Michael's generously gave $762 to this program. And uh, there are envelopes in the pews, and if you'd like to participate, pick one up. I know we've had a number of envelopes returned even last weekend and many have been dropped in the collection this weekend. Uh, make sure if you use a check to write SCCO and then on the memo line, be sure to write backpack so that the money goes to the program that it's destined for. So we thank you for your support. Uh, we hope that you had a great 4th of July and uh, we pray that God will continue to bless us with good and favorable weather the remainder of the summer. Let us stand and pray. we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Please join us in our sending hymn, number 627, America the Beautiful, number 627. We will do verses 1, 3, and 4.